I wouldn't normally do this. But I'm about to show you just how dangerous glass can get when it suddenly shatters. This happened in January 2020. A glass table exploded 30 minutes into a steamboat meal. And this in May 2018, when a glass shower panel shattered all over a toddler. At least 530 glass panels were reported to have suddenly shattered over the past 10 years. That's an average of 53 cases a year. So in this special episode, I find out when glass can be dangerous and how we can better protect ourselves. There was a loud pop and boom, everything just shattered. Joshua Lim posted this on social media saying, this was already cleaned up halfway. A glass pot on his stove exploded. I'm on my way to meet him to find out how it happened. He's recreating the scene for me. Well, at least the part before the explosion. What were you doing at that time? I was boiling water to uh -huh. sterilize my, my baby's milk bottle. And I left the boiling water unattended for okay. quite a bit of time. When I came back, I realized the water level already had gone down quite a bit. Okay. So I grabbed a bottle just like this. Yep. I filled it up with tap water and I'm not going to do it now, <laughs> okay, uh, for safety. Uh, and I just poured it into the pot. And then... And then boom, basically. And just for safety right now, let's just turn this off also. So the moment I poured the water in, mm -hmm. it just exploded. Everything just shattered 360. And I took a jump back. Right. Yeah. Were you hurt? Very thankfully, no. It was just a very small nick um, just over here, which right. I noticed only because I was a spot of blood. And my, my shorts had a little hole in it. I spent a good five minutes just frozen on the spot. Yeah. Like, yeah. What just happened? How am I going to clean this up? Okay, thankfully the baby is outside. And did you actually check to see what kind of glass it was? I don't remember actually. Right. But the thing is, we've been using this pot for quite a few years yeah. already. We've used it to cook stuff, make stew. Uh, my wife has used it to braise stuff as well. Okay. And for my first child, we also used it to sterilize our bottles. I did a check on glass cookware in Singapore. Most are made of tempered soda lime glass, borosilicate glass, or a glass ceramic mix. Simply put, they are designed to be able to withstand temperature changes. So, why did Joshua's pot explode? To help me figure this out is material science expert Dr. Leonard Lowe. He's fascinated by how versatile glass can be and has spent a decade studying its properties. How is it that glass that we have at home, which is meant to be safe for use for cooking, for instance, can break so easily? Glass is brittle and it also is a poor conductor of heat. Essentially what happens is a sudden change in temperature to the glass. It causes stresses in the glass. So and that right. can actually cause the glass to fail. I'm told this sudden change in temperature that leads to glass failure is called a thermal shock. And to demonstrate this, Dr. Lowe has prepared a simple experiment. This glass cup has been preheated for an hour to 300 degrees Celsius. We're adding room temperature tap water that's about 25 degrees Celsius. And when the water hits the glass... Oh! Wow, did you see that? Did you guys see that? Look at that! The first few drops of water and BAM! Glass failure was instant. Let's take a look at how thermal shock works in slow motion. When tap water hits the surface layer of the heated glass cup, it cools it down, causing it to contract much faster than the interior of the glass. This creates tension in the glass layers, stressing the cup, causing it to crack and ultimately break into many pieces. So in Joshua's case, he doesn't remember where he got his you know, glass bowl from. It's several years old. So does the type of glass matter? Those oh. glassware that uh, you use for heating soups, a lot of times they are borosilicate glasses. So it doesn't expand and contract as much as uh, normal glass. Well, it's very unlikely that this will happen at home because uh, a lot of times uh, we don't heat the glassware to such high temperatures. So what I did in the experiment was force it to actually uh, undergo thermal shock. There is an exception. 
if your glass cookware has micro cracks or chips, it might not need such an extreme sudden change in temperature to shatter. That could be why Joshua's pot exploded. But there is one saving grace. If you recall, he wasn't badly hurt. Tempered glass, there is an additional uh, property to it. When it fails, it will break into very small, tiny pieces right. with uh, less sharp edges. So that's why they call it a safety glass. Thermal shock, as Dr Lowe says, is rare. It requires intense heating and an extreme sudden change in temperature. What I found interesting was how the different types of glass break. Tempered glass, classified as a safety glass, breaks into small pieces with round edges. But is it really safer? Over time, that can bleed in and one day just boom! I've discovered that tempered glass is supposedly safer than normal glass. So this is tempered glass, and this is regular glass. You can hardly tell the difference. But tempered glass is known to be safer because it's up to five times stronger than regular glass. Let's put that to the test. I'm starting with normal glass. So look here, the tempered glass is definitely stronger. It's still holding up. Another reason why tempered glass is considered safer compared to normal glass is because it's less likely to cut you when broken. To force this to break completely, I'm going to try using this uh, tiny steel tool. It's called a center punch. I can see why this tempered glass is considered a safety glass because it breaks into tiny, small pebbles with round edges compared to regular glass, which has really sharp edges. But here's the thing. In 2011, tighter rules kicked in on the use of tempered glass for safety barriers and at heights above 2.4 metres. If tempered glass is safer, why did authorities restrict its use? I'm seeking answers from Chua Tik Huat. He has spent over a decade ensuring that safety glass such as tempered glass fulfills stringent safety standards before they leave the factory floor. So I understand tempered glass is meant to be safer and stronger, but yet the government has said at certain heights, certain areas, they cannot be used. Why is that the case? Now, glass, normal glass contain impurity. Uh -huh. And uh, most of the impurity in the glass itself are safe except for one type of impurity which uh, we refer to as nickel sulphide. Nickel sulphide? Now, nickel sulphide only affects tempered glass, unfortunately. The process of tempering actually causes the nickel sulphide to be unsafe. This is how tempered glass is made. Normal glass is put into a furnace, which is heated between 650 and 700 degrees Celsius to soften it. This is the first step to making the glass tougher. If there is nickel sulphide present, you can't see it with the naked eye because it is even smaller than a grain of salt. But here's the thing, it's not just the glass that is heated. Nickel sulphide too heats up and this causes it to contract. The trouble arises when glass moves to be rapidly cooled. Cold air is blasted to cool down the outside of the glass faster than the inside, compressing the surface and creating tension within. This is what makes tempered glass stronger than normal glass and changes its break pattern. But rapid cooling also traps the nickel sulphide in the hardened glass. Over time, the nickel sulphide will expand, creating micro cracks which can cause the glass to shatter without warning. Ah, oh, this is the finished product. So I really can't see anything in the glass. Oh boy. Then how? 
Because well, I'm thinking every piece of glass, I'll be a bit worried, right? We are able to test if they are nickel sulfide. Where the glass comes from also play a part. So for our company, we do keep track on where the glass comes from and we do monitor the uh, number of breakage uh, whereby the glass is caused by nickel sulfide. So if all these tests are being done, then why is the glass still breaking? Other than uh, nickel sulfide caused breakage, uh, there are other causes that can also cause a, a tempered glass to break. And uh, those are, can be caused by handling during installation if they are not careful. They might chip the edge, they might scratch the surface. That can also cause it to break spontaneously. So in other words, if this is my shower door and when they're transporting it, they make a small little crack here, you know, over time that can Correct. bleed in and one day just boom. Yes, that's right. Wow. That's scary. So for people who are worried about spontaneous breakage from the glass, is there any other alternative? Yes, there are alternatives. One of the alternatives is to laminate the glass. Oh, is that, is that something you guys do here too? Yes, we do. Let, let me show you. Okay. We bond two pieces of glass mm -hmm. with a piece of plastic known as polyvinyl butro. So that piece of plastic is in the middle of the two pieces of glass? If one piece of glass shattered, the other piece of glass is able to hold the whole set of glass in place and prevent it from falling down and injuring oh. people. So if laminated glass is so much safer, then why aren't we using it more often? The laminated glass is, uh, is about twice uh, the cost twice. of tempered glass. Wow, so that is a lot more money. So this is laminated glass. It's essentially tempered glass bound together by a middle layer. If I were to hit it, it would shatter, but it shouldn't fall apart. Well, I guess you can't put a price on safety. Seasoned glass installers I spoke to estimate that 50% of glass breakage occur due to improper handling and installation. This includes installing glass pieces that are the wrong size for its supporting frame and being careless with the transfer and installation of glass panels. Dante has installed over a thousand glass panels in the last five years. Today, Don is letting me tag along on one of his projects. He's going to show me how to handle and install glass properly. Hey Don. Hello, Hi, hello. Hi. First, you have to wear a safety glove, uh, which is specially for the glass. This one is an anti-slip glove for your safety purpose to hmm. protect your palm. And in case that you have a sweaty palm, it will not slip the glass as well. I can feel it's kind of a, got a sticky. It's sticky, right? Yeah. Let's just move the glass a bit. All right, just shift a bit forward. Just in case. Oh, pretty heavy actually. Yes. Uh. Okay, so um, do not tilt it. This way we have to carry it vertically. Oh, not like I'm carrying a table. You no, know, you can't do that. You need the weights on the center. Oh, because you're afraid it may sag and therefore crack it. Okay, so all right. first of all, one hand. One hand. On top. And the other hand like that. And lay it against our shoulder. Ready? And one, one two, two three. Up. Oh, wow. It didn't look so heavy, but... This actually is... You've got to be very, very careful on the edges. Okay. Okay, so just yeah. let us just lightly lift up the bit and put it onto up. the block. The weakest part of the glass right, is actually the edges of the glasses. Uh, just in case that we have a slight knock, any of the chip off to shatter yeah. the whole glass. So we are very particular over the edges. We're off to replace a glass panel in a balcony which had suddenly shattered. This is a place where right. the glass. Where it happened, I see. Oh, so this whole piece of glass shattered. Right. So what actually happened here? There's a few possibility. It might be due to improper installation. Uh, it might be mishandling during the transportation. And uh, it might be due to the nickel sulfide as well. And I see that this is tempered glass. 
So what are you replacing it with? We are still replacing a tempered glass for this case in order to match the other glasses that currently is. But it's actually above what the government stipulates as the uh, allowed height of 2.4 meters. Yes, for this case, right, this building is actually um, built before 2011. That applies only after 2011. Don's workers are meticulous with how they handle the glass. The edges never rest directly on any hard surface. Even when fitting the glass panel into the metal frame, the edges are permanently cushioned by setting blocks. This is to prevent them from rubbing against the metal. If not, constant friction will chip the edges. And over time, this will lead to the entire panel shattering. Any way for me to be able to tell whether it's been done well? Basically, there isn't any way for you to check whether the glass is properly installed. So what would be your advice to consumers? Please uh, go to the professionals instead of uh, general contractors, as uh, professionals are the experts in handling the glass and, and ensuring the quality of the glass as well. I never knew there were so many aspects to glass installation. But once you understand the properties of glass, well, then you'll get why you'll have to be so careful with it. I mean, the glass piece earlier was about 46 kilograms and about this wide, and it took them slightly over two hours to install. Now, imagine a huge glass structure that is much larger than that. Tiny cracks can cause massive glass explosions. The problem is we can't see them. But what if he can? I found out that there are several reasons why glass suddenly shatters. One being improper handling and installation, which could cause micro cracks. Cracks so small, we can't see it. The next person, or should I say thing, I'm about to meet, claims to be able to see what we all can't. These robots all have the same function to clean and scan glass panels for cracks. They're just used in different settings. And the man behind these machines, Dr. Mohan Rajesh Elara. Hey, Hi. So I'm here to find out more about this robot. How does it actually work? So as the robot moves and does the cleaning work, uh, it can also inspect for any uh, visual cracks. Uh, here, what you see are the areas that the robot believes there is a crack right. and would require further uh, human intervention uh, to validate the presence of a crack. The robot here uses uh, AI uh, as a means to detect and classify. Yeah, you want to try it yourself? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So I can go left, right. But the challenge, I guess, with this, as we've noticed from this glass, is that it doesn't always uh, pick up the right information, right? Sometimes there are other things which will distract the camera. So with uh, buildings on the other side mm. and features on them, the robot can get confused uh, yeah. that there is a crack, but it's a false alarm. So what are you doing to sort of overcome that? So currently we are working with two other modalities, mm -hmm. acoustic and thermography, where we fuse all three um, information together to improve the probability. Uh, of uh, detecting the crack and to minimize wow. all the alarm. So essentially, the robot will be able to see, hear and feel. Yes, so we are currently developing it as an independent sensor, which will then be integrated in robot. Just like how pregnant women go for ultrasounds to check on their babies, ultrasound is used here to detect cracks we can't see. Cracks reflect sound differently, and this is shown in the blue areas on the monitor. Cracks also retain more heat. So the idea is to have a robot blow a small stream of hot air at the glass and for a thermal camera to pick up heat signatures. Areas with cracks will show up red. With now robots doing the job, they can do it 24-7 every day looking for uh, cracks, mm -hmm. um, which is going to be difficult if it's done as a manual process. So that's pretty awesome technology back there. And if we can deploy it on glass structures, on our buildings, I'm sure it can help prevent accidents. But the thing is, those robots are still about two years away from coming to the commercial market. 
So in the meantime, I'm wondering what else we can do to be safer at home. The best person to tell me would probably be Fong Kim Choi. He's from the National Safety Council, which promotes safety awareness in various aspects of our lives, including at home. So this is a typical kitchen in a modern home, you know. I mean, what are the things I should be looking at in terms of glass safety? Yeah, okay. Let's talk about this uh, glass and tumblers. Okay. In the first place, they all stack up like this. It's in a way quite risky because you may chip the edges. You're saying I shouldn't shouldn't stack? Stack, yeah. I or it's even a little bit stuck. <laughs> yeah, it's very difficult. Because when it comes in, I may, I may chip the glass below? Right, if you put it too hard. Let's look at the cupboard. Yeah, this is a typical good example of safety practice. Cardboard uh, cushion in between uh -huh. the glassware. One more thing that I noticed here is the... The hob. The hob, yeah. Yes. Uh, this normally is made of tempered glass. It has very high compressive strength, mm -hmm. but you cannot take top loads. If, if I drop this yes. here, right? Uh, you may crack Then the that will yes. crack it. Tempered glass is also used on the microwave oven door, the oven door, and inside your fridge. Okay, it has a lot of shelving. Breaking of uh, tempered glass shelving is uh -huh. very common. So be mindful, we try to cool down the food a bit first before we put in. And remember not to drop heavy containers like casserole and so on. Steve, one of the areas where in a home we need to check is the toilet. Because okay. It's a highly hazardous area. Can we look at the, the shower? First of all, we look for it, uh, starting of cracks, chipping, mm -hmm. and so on. So these edges actually they're quite good. Is this where you would recommend having definitely tempered and maybe even laminated glass? Yeah, laminated glass would be ideal because it will not uh, break into small shards or small pieces uh -huh. and so on. If let's say they find it too expensive to change this to laminated glass, they can simply put safety film on both sides. Uh, they will also hold okay. the broken shards or broken pieces of glass together. So in other words, if I already have my shower doors installed, I can still, like now, these doors, I could still add on the safety film. Yes, enhance the safety by putting safety film on. Glass can shatter for many reasons and not all are within our control. So I guess the best we can do is to take note of the type of glass we're using and how we're using it. And if you notice any chips or cracks on them as well, change them out immediately. So take a look around the home today. This is tempered glass. I'm thinking of switching it to laminated glass or at the very least put safety film on both sides of the glass. Don't wait for an accident to happen because by then it might be too late.